Good afternoon, my name is Bowen Dunning. Um, I am from Iredale County. We are just north of Charlotte, North Carolina. If you've been on Highway 77 and you've driven over Lake Norman, then you have uh, been to Iredale County. Um, we're happy to talk with you a little bit today about what we've done and where we've been so far with our Be Well Iredale project. Just to give you a little background, I come from the world of public education. I spent 30 years in public education. The thing I'm most proud of is 14 of those years as a building level principal. Uh, most recently retired as an assistant superintendent from the Iredell State School Schools. So we're happy to have our group here today that is a really good mix of um, healthcare and um, United Way and government and all kinds of folks that have come together to um, make things better in Iredell County. Before I start today, uh, we're gonna show you a video. Um, before we show this video, I would like to tell you that it may be difficult for you to watch. And so um, we'll let you know that they will be talking about um, suicide. This is not an easy video to see. So if this is something that might be a trigger for you, please be aware of that and, and if you need to step out. Uh, this is a collaborative video um, effort that we did um, a while back with the United Way of Iredell County uh, partners and also the public school district. So this is a collaborative effort between those two. We've been able to share this uh, on lots of different um, venues and we've got two different short videos to show you real quick. Thank you. I believe stigma with males is something that's viable and it's a, it's a big issue. Dylan wouldn't tell his friends that he was contemplating or had thoughts of that because in his mind, Dylan very much cared what other people thought. That would be a sign of weakness. The kids that care about what their friends think are probably the most at risk because they're not going to confide into their friends about what they're feeling and thinking. And so again, just having that place in school or in the community where these kids can go you know, because you think about the average kid, they're not gonna drive up to a community and go tell someone they're feeling suicidal or they don't they feel despondent or hopeless. They're just not gonna do that. So we gotta brainstorm as a community to figure out how we can make help accessible for all the kids. Because what about the kids that don't drive or the parents that are so strict that once the kids get home from school they're not allowed to leave again? You know, so how can we make it accessible in the time that we are influencing them as a community? Some of the things that we have to do is we have to check on one another. But we have to make sure we keep them open lines of communication, making sure that we're checking on each other. Because um, growing up, you know, our philosophy, our mental health was suck it up. You'll be all right. Just live with it. You know, be a man or be a, be a strong woman. But that's not the way you solve these problems. These kids nowadays need someone who needs to help. We need to talk about it more. We need to use the word more often. Um, we need to get people into counseling more often. We start seeing them being withdrawn or depressed or anxious. Um, we need to <coughs> normalize it, you know, in some sense, but also say, do we want our quality of life to be better? And we need to say yes to that question. We do want our quality of life to be better. We don't want it to go down um, a different path. There are resources here. There are people who have literally dedicated their lives to helping for this cause and they want to help. We want to use those people. We need to do more of that. I think the gap still is kids telling um, when someone is unsafe and seeking adult help. I think some kids are afraid to be tattletales or to betray their friend. What's still lacking is you know, positive bystanders when somebody's getting bullied. Um, we still have difficulty with peers standing up for that student. We need to, to really work more with our youth um, to support them and supporting others. But I also think that we must look at training the children. Because the kids, particularly teenagers, when I've done focus groups in the school systems from grade five to grade, grade 12, the, the students have told me I'm not, I'm, I know you say I should talk to my parents or a trusted adult, a counselor or whatever, 
I may talk to a trusted adult, but I probably am not gonna talk to my parents. And the reason I'm not gonna talk to my parents is because my parents will take my phone away. And their phone, in their minds, is a lifeline. So we have to look at who do kids talk to? They talk to their friends. So if we don't train the kids, if we don't train the teenagers on how to talk about this issue with their friends, then we're missing the boat. It's a systemic approach. It's the schools, it's the community, and it's the kids, it's the people. So we need to be sure we cover all the bases. Raising the awareness is what is going to help us reduce the rate of suicide. Um, so in your packet today, you'll see a, a handout that um, includes a lot of different things that we've done in Iredell County. Hopefully you can use that as a resource. Um, see if there's anything on that list that um, makes you go, hmm, and something that you want to try in your community. Um, what, what we really wanted to, um, we're going to actually skip the next video, but I think, can we go to, there should be, I think there's another slide. Is there another, there's another slide? Okay, then we don't need anything. I'll just keep talking. Um, just so you'll know, um, this, this is an initiative that's been going on for quite some time. What we're so excited about, though, now is as Be Well Iredell, we now have a firm foundation, an umbrella under which we can house all of this information. Um, really grateful to our United Way for helping us find that place to house Be Well Iredell. Um, it is, you'll see on your list there, a collaborative effort between our health department, um, our United Way, our local government, Partners Health Management, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and the school districts. And so we're really excited about having a landing spot for what I think up here you guys call actionable items um, that, that we can um, uh, facilitate across our county. I don't know about you guys, but in our county, a lot of the folks that are trying to do this good work are doing it in silos in their own little towns. For example, you can go to Mooresville and you'll find all kinds of wonderful people that are addressing these issues in Mooresville. And then you go to Statesville, North Carolina, and you find all kinds of wonderful people that are addressing these issues in Statesville. And so we're very happy to have this one big umbrella under which we can um, have these discussions and bring people together. The last thing I'll say, because I know we're short on time, um, and one thing that we've really figured out in looking at this data, um, we've really been able to drill down a little bit with our data to determine what is it that is happening in Iredell County that is unique to our, our, um, our county and our initiative. And one thing that kind of blew me away is the fact that um, our suicide rate is, you know, I'm an educator, so I always think about the young people, right? I think it's the kids. And so um, that's the world that, that I live in. And so that's the way that I think. But in fact, in our county, it's men between the ages of about 25, 29 years old to about 52 years old. And so all of a sudden we're sitting around looking at each other going, well, what can we do to help these men, right? So these are great conversations to have. Uh, we appreciate your time today and certainly happy to answer any questions you might have.